Hello and welcome back to I Speak Spoke Spoken. My name is James and today we're going to be talking about the most common pronunciation mistakes in British English. So, we have quite a few things to look at today and they are all things that are very commonly mistaken in English as the title would suggest. But they are all very beneficial to you even if you don't make those mistakes as in the future you will know to look out for these things even when looking at other words as well. So let's get started. Sit versus seat. So can you notice the difference between these two sounds? Sit, seat. What's the difference there? Well, seat has a longer e sound, right? It's sit, which has the quick i, sit, and seat, which almost the face is going outwards. Seat, seat. Good job, guys. And remember, Follow along with me as we go, because the more you follow along, the better your pronunciation will get. And don't worry if you think that you sound silly, because you don't. Like, and even if you do, it doesn't matter. No one's listening. We will get perfect British English pronunciation together. Um, let's move on to the next one here. Cat and can't. Can you tell the differences here? Cat, can't. Well, cat has the quick ah sound again. Can you make that noise? Ah. And can't has the ah, it has the drawn out ah sound. Ah, can't. Okay, let's go through them one more time. Cat, can't. Good job. Next up, we have cut and caught. So the difference here is once again, we have the quick vowel sound, which is the a uh, cut. And then we have the longer, more drawn out vowel sound, which is caught. So let's go through them one more time, shall we? Cut, caught. My throat is even going a bit further down as I say caught. When I say cut, is staying in the same place. But as I say caught, it lowers. Core. It's almost like I'm trying to sing or, or um, make like a funny, funny noise with my voice. Um, here we have bit and beat. Once again, we have the quick and the, we have the quick and we have the short drawn out um, vowel sounds as well. So bit is the quick one. Bit, eh, eh, eh. And then we have beat, which is a bit more drawn out. E, E, beat. All right, if you want to follow along with me now, so bit, you go, beat. Good job, guys, really good job. Next up, we have lock and we have luck. This one is a bit more similar than the rest of them, I would say. This one is much more, much closer than the other ones are and a bit harder to tell the difference between. So, lock and luck. So, the difference here, they're both quick vowel sounds, but the difference is in the vowel sound. So, lock has the O vowel sound, the O, and luck has the U vowel sound, luck. Lock and luck. All right, if you want to follow after me here. Lock, luck. Good job and focus on getting that O and that U sound as you go. Next up, we have consonant challenges. So yes, consonants can be quite challenging, especially when you have clusters of consonants together. Um, and thankfully, in English, quite often we separate our consonants with vowels but sometimes you get consonants that that have some mistakes and can be quite troublesome sometimes so let's see how we deal with that so this versus think so as you can see this and think both start with the same two letters t and h 
However, they make a bit of a different noise when used in each word. So this and think, can you hear the difference there? Th th this is making more of a buzzing noise. So as you push the air through, you're, you're making a buzzing noise between your teeth and your tongue. Th and as you do the think noise, you're, make, you're, the, you're, you're letting the air pass through a bit more. So think, think. Th, 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 th. Just practice that. Once again, I know it looks a bit silly, but it's okay. It's okay because after a while, you're going to have the best pronunciation out of everyone that you know. So it's okay. Um, and if you have a look at the top right hand corner of the video here, you can see a little eye that if you click, you can get everything that you can see behind me and also a quiz that you can take. Um, if you are on a phone or you can't see the eye up there, look down in the description below and you can follow the link there to get everything here as well. So don't worry if you can't see it. All right, so as I said, this and think. Just keep practicing them and repeat after me. This, this, think. Think. When you say this, you should feel a vibration in your chest. So put your hand on your chest. Th th this. This. And if you keep your hand on your chest and say think, think, you should feel a, you shouldn't feel much of a vibration at all. You might feel a bit, but not nearly as much as when you said this. So next up we have light and right. So the difference here, as you can probably see, is the R and the L, which are different here. And they are, are consonants that you may mix up and mix up for each other. Um, and it is very easy because they are, because they kind of, they have certain places in the mouth that maybe you don't, that you're not able to actually find in your mouth just yet. But I'm going to explain those for you right now. So light is Imagine that the middle of your mouth at the top is like a trampoline and your tongue is bouncing off of it. So light, light, light. There you go. And then right is you're pushing your lips forward. And then with your teeth, you're making the noise. You're bouncing the teeth off of the middle point of your lip. Right, right. There you go. Try one more time. Light, remember your tongue is being used here. Light, and then right. Your tongue is barely moving. It's barely moving here. Right. Fabulous, good job guys. And just keep practicing, because even if you can't get it right now, just keep going through it and through it and through it until you can do it. And that is when I promise you will really, really, really find how far you've come with your pronunciation. Next up, we have fan and van. So once again, we're going to have a look at the pronunciation differences here. So fan, you are putting your teeth, the top teeth, on the bottom lip, on the middle bit. So you and then you're letting the air through. So fan, fan. And then van, once again, as before, we're letting a vibration happen between the teeth and the lips. So whereas you're pushing the air through, it's a bit lighter and that's why it vibrates. You see? Van, van. And it doesn't need to be van, but it's a good way to practice, you see? You can do a quick van, van. You see? Good job, guys. Okay, ship and sheep. So here we have a different length of the sound uh, of the sound of the e, um, even though in ship we don't have the i sound, but we have ship, which is the is the i vowel sound, and then the sheep, which is the e um, vowel sound, um, but it is a long e. You see, so ship ship is a quick a quick sound ship ship, whereas sheep. We're almost pushing our cheeks outwards. Sheep, sheep, instead of ship, which would be very easy to accidentally say ship, you want to say sheep, sheep. Keep that E for a bit longer. Now we're gonna look at word stress errors. 
because this is very, very, very common in English and easy to do, really easy to do. And it can really help with understa people's understanding of what you're saying and also sounding a lot more like a native speaker as you speak um, in English. So, here are some words that are pretty much the same word but are used as both a noun and a verb. The thing that changes them from a noun to a verb in which we know as we, as we hear it is the word stress. So we have, uh, we have made the capital, we've capitalized the word stress here so it's even more obvious. So I will get rid of that so you can see. So the noun of, uh, of this word is means the thing that you play music on when you put it on a this word player you see and the way that we say it is record record do you see how the stress is on the re re record record exactly and then our verb form for this word is record record to record you see the Stress is on that chord part of the word. So record, so if you want to repeat after me, the, the noun is record, record, and then the verb is record, record. Very good job. And then very similarly here, we have, and throughout here, you can see that mainly the first, uh, we, 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 have quite a, we, we have quite a good rhythm here with how we're doing them with the nouns and the verbs here. So let's look at contract. So the noun is a contract. It goes contract. So up, tract. That is how the word stress works here. A contract. And a contract is the thing that you give someone to sign so you have a contract between you. Maybe you're doing business with someone. You want them to sign that thing. So then you have a deal. Um, and then to contract is a verb to get maybe an illness. You contract an illness. Um, and that is the verb for that. Um, here we have present. Um, so a present is something that you get for Christmas um, or your birthday where people give you a gift and they give you a present. And once again, our word stress is on pre, present, present. And then as we have the verb, we have pr um, present, present. And you see the e eh changes its sound here. It becomes more of a uh, present instead of present. So as you can see, the verb sound, no, the, the vowel sounds actually change even though it's not part of the word that is actually being stressed here, you see? Um, so present, if you want to repeat after me, present, this is the noun, and then the verb, present. Amazing. And you can even practice with your hand. You can go present, you can go present to actually practice the different, um, the different ways to stress the syllables um, in these words. Because a lot of these words are two syllables long so they're good ones to actually practice because they're quite simple you see um, next up we have um, project and project so the noun project is a project that you're working on maybe you're working on a um, maybe you're writing a book this is your project you're in the you're in the pro on the pro in the process of doing this thing it's your pr project that you're working on and then we have the verb to project, which means to make your voice heard, to be louder than, uh, to be loud so people can actually hear you from the back of an audience. You project your voice, you see? And now last but certainly not least, we have um, refuse and we have refuse. So the noun refuse means rubbish. It means the rubbish can, the rubbish bin that you're throwing your rubbish out into. Uh, and then the verb refuse means to say that you will not do something. You refuse to do something. You will, you, you, by no matter how much the person asks, you will not do it. Um, and here, once again, we have the word stress of refuse, refuse, 
refuse that we have the the um, stress at the beginning refuse and then here we have refuse refuse remember keep using your hand you can practice using your hand um, okay so now we're going to talk about homophones and near homophones um, and they really do require careful attention male and male they sound exactly the same however they have two different names so male as in the first one here means a letter that you may get um, through the letterbox in your house you're getting mail or maybe you get an email which means which is an, a mail through the internet that you are given um, and then we have male which means a person who is a man so um, a male a man or a boy so a male male versus male and you can keep an eye on the different spellings here m-a-i-l is the letter and m-a-l-e is the male person next up we have c and c <laughs> um, here we have two words that once again as all of as pretty much all of these do sound exactly the same but are spelt differently and that's what a homophone is so a c the c here s-e-a is the place where the fish live it's where uh, maybe you'll go swimming um, and it is the place where there's lots of water you see um, and then c s-e-e -E, to see means to be able to view something for, through your eyes to see something um, next up we have right and right so right as in r-i-g-h-t means to be correct to to be right about something so okay what's one plus one oh it's two okay yes you're right you see um, and then right as in w-r-i-t-e is to write something with a pen a pencil to write you see um, next up we have new versus new once again sounds exactly the same just different spelling um, new as in something has recently been made or created and this one is spelt n-e-w n-e-w is new something that is new and when you're pronouncing new remember that that sound that goes you you you're kind of going underneath the sound you see so new um, and then that um, comes next to new as in someone used to have the uh, knowledge of something they knew something in the past and last but certainly not least we have flower and flower so f-l-o-u-r flower is a powdery substance that we use to make cakes cupcakes pancakes all sorts of baked goods are used uh, they, they use flour as part of their ingredients um, and then flour is in f l o w e r are the things that sprout from the ground and make our make our world look beautiful and colorful and um, are generally very very lovely things to have in the world so yes remember that practice as always makes perfect and when you are having fun you are learning your best um, and once you and if you don't remember all of these words and you probably won't uh, remember all of these differences and these um, pronunciation mistakes and you probably will get some of them wrong but the more you practice and the more you put the work in and maybe keep watching this video a few times and maybe just keep reading and speaking and listening you will get them i promise i have faith in you and um, i will see you in the next video so my name has been james we've been i speak spoke spoken and joyfully